Hey, welcome guys to Rest of Designs, the channel that brings you Mark II and Mark III content. In today's video, it's going to be part two to the charge cooler system. And today's video, we are going to actually get the charge cooler mounted and hopefully get all the coolant pipes fitted on and also mount up the pump as well, the electric pump for it, as well as hopefully just uh, put a couple of wires to the pump and actually see and make sure there's no leaks and stuff. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. Okay, so let's not waste any more time and let's get into this, start making up these brackets to mount this charge cooler. Okay, so to get started on these brackets, what I've done is remove the crossbar and the radiator so I can actually see here the charge cooler, which is just there. There's all these convenient little holes here going around. So actually, I'll probably use one of these and then actually see if I can pick up these points here on the charge cooler. Probably not that one, but I'll probably get these two here actually. So then I'll make a bracket going there and make a, an interconnecting bracket between those at the right angle. Cause I want it to come, I want it to come away a little bit from here cause it's right up against there. So if I can move it actually, so it's a bit more, probably not too much, but just slightly further away. Cause obviously then it will come close, too close to the, to the, starter motor so I don't want to do that but also the good thing is is the engine actually tilts backwards so it always comes away never really comes towards uh, but yep yeah, I'll get this angle right there so I can use that and just mount it off these two and then I'll do the same for something at the bottom okay so I've got this uh, this three mil angle steel which I'm gonna make the first bracket also what I've done is move this switch out of the way so that I get kind of a bearing in 3D space. I've kind of made this little bracket up with some spaces so I can see that it clears everywhere it needs to clear and it's fine. That's the position I need it to be in. Also when I put the boost pipe in, it gives me the 45 that needs to go from there to there, which will be fine. Now the expansion bottle is what was next. And we're going to use these mounts here and I've kind of trimmed it off, but actually when I mounted it on, it literally sits, uh, the outlet of the bottle sits right, right on there. So it's way too close. So what I'm going to do is I've got some angle iron for some strength to bolt it on. It moves it away, uh, what about 30 mil, 40 mil maybe. And that will do that. So that's what's on the bench now. Some stainless, what's this, uh, two mil maybe. And what, or two mil and a half. So what I've done is just cut it, so it's still got the strength in it. Now I'm just going to draw the holes, measure it up, draw the holes, uh, weld these on or bolt these straight on. Probably won't weld them on actually. And they're rounded as well, so it clears it. And then what I'll do is I'll weld these two stainless on nuts and bolts on there. So then actually, actually I can just, just, just drop it on like that way. Okay, so first things first, measure up these holes and get this done. Okay, so I've made that little bit of angle line with these two little bolts, these uh, dome headed bolts through there. So all I need to do now, is literally just put this on like that. So there you go, all bolted up with those nice little captive nuts, VW ones, simple dimples. And now this outlet here is gonna clear which one is it? Is it this one? It's this one. I'm going to put the boost pipe in. Yep. Perfect. It gives me enough angle then to come back round and maybe tie it to here to go down to the first uh, coolant hoses. So I've got the first bracket done. On this side, I made a little bracket that comes off the fan as well. So it all holds it up, so it's very secure now at the top. So next will be a bracket on the bottom with a riv nut in the cross beam. Also, I think I need to uh, trim that cross, that cross bar a little bit and then paint it up. So it just gives me a, a little bit more space. Okay, let's crack on with this bottom bracket. Okay. 
just use the rivet nut, put that in there, it's perfect. The bracket, Nan's gonna bolt this bracket on to secure the bottom of, of the cooler. As you can see, I've trimmed off just a little bit of an area to give it a bit more leeway, as well as give a bit more space to the starter motor. Okay, so as you can see, it's mounted up solid, not moving at all, budging, really giving it a good shake. Uh, clears the battery box, got enough space here for to run the boost pipe up to the inlet. Also loads of space between the starter and the charge cooler. And also the coolant pipes actually go around this way around, so that's a pretty cool. Okay, so next step is gonna be to mount the radiator back in and also run the coolant pipes. I won't put coolant in the system yet, but at least I'll secure it all up so that then I can actually move on to mounting uh, the charge cooler radiator. Radiator is all mounted up and the clips and the coolant pipes are all done. So this is the, the radiator for the charge cooler. Now, there isn't any natural places to actually fix in points. So what I've done is I've drilled two holes here. So that hasn't actually gone through the core. So I've done two six mil holes there so I can put two bolts. So I'm gonna make a little L bracket at the back and pot rivet it onto the frame, which will hold it there. And as you can see, actually, I've also followed the radiator. The radiator is actually going much like the original one. It, it sits in deeper there than it does there. It doesn't sit square. So I've done the same, so that I've got more space here for these coolant pipes to come around. I might have to trim this little bit down. Okay, so I drilled those two holes. This is the angle line I'm gonna use stainless. Uh, two mil thick, more than adequate. Also you got the angle gives you the strength. So I'm just gonna trim this off and do that little bit on there. So then it kind of just slides perfectly into there like so. Oh, after a bit of a clean up, look at that, fits perfectly. So now all I need to do is just mark it up, draw the two holes and then I'm gonna weld uh, two captive nuts onto the back of it and then I'll pot rivet the other side with three I'll make three holes offset so one there one there one there gives it more strength and I'll pot rivet these on with some washers on the other side as you can see mounted it up and it's so sturdy these pot rivets when you actually use a, a washer on, on on the other side of it, it obviously spreads the load and obviously the way I've done it as well so not all in line it's made it really, really solid, so. Okay, so that's the first bracket done. So now we're gonna move over to the other side. And I'm probably gonna do the same again. Gonna mount it. Um, probably off here, something like that, a bracket or a bracket off the back of there. They use this or something. I'll have to figure something out to make a little bracket. That's mounted up now. Now it's gonna be trying working out these. Uh, I ordered a couple of these connectors. This is one that actually came with, with this radiator. It's got a tighter angle. This one's got a slightly less angle because the other one actually was, one was like this and the other one was straight. So unfortunately the orientation isn't the way I wanted it to be. I could modify it, but I think this will work for me still the same way. So, so I think this is going to have to go through there to make a like a nice hole. And it's actually got a little cavity. I won't make too much of a hole. I don't want to weaken the structure too much, and it'll actually go through there. The other one will actually do a 90, and probably the pump is going to be mounted here. Okay, so I do have an array of pipes. Obviously they need to be cleaned before I put them on. I've got a couple of pumps here as well. One even with the, the bracket, but also I'm gonna take the bracket that mounts it off that GTD engine, which is here, the GTD engine. It's got this nice little bracket, which is perfect. So I'm probably gonna chop it off from there. It's got the perfect little mounts and I can actually uh, mount it so it's isolated, so it doesn't okay. vibrate. So that's the hole I'm gonna make, kind of lead straight to the charge cooler which is just there, the top, not the bottom one, or that one there that you can see. So we're just gonna kind of go through here instead. 
We use one of these carbide bits, which is for aluminium and bumpers and plastics and stuff. And it'll just make a nice shape in here. Okay, so I've used that carbide bit to make this perfect shape. And it looks like I found a pipe that was actually made for it. A uh, funny thing is actually, the diameter of the inlet and the outlet of the radiator is actually slightly larger than what's on the inlet and the outlet of the charge cooler because obviously this is from a Golf and that's from a transporter but I found this pipe which seems to be I think it's maybe from a I don't know if you guys can focus there you go if it's from a Polo or something uh, part number 5QO so maybe that's a Polo I'm not sure but anyway it seems to be like it was perfectly made for it so I'm just going to feed it through so you guys can actually see how this actually fits perfectly um, here and it's even got this like this little protector thing which actually not that there's any sharp, sharp edges but I've taken them away but at least this will actually protect it because it'll actually sit right in there like so and on the other side so as you can see it's got a perfect tight 90 I move my hand out the way you can see and it actually even clears uh, the power steering pipe to come up to feed the bottle here Yep, so this pipe seems like it was perfectly made for this application. So that's the top radiator hose done. So now it's going to be the next one is going to be a tight 90, probably to come underneath here and get the pump up and see which orientation way the pump works, as well as then see from here to join that connector down at the bottom there. Done all the hoses, so we've got a variant of a couple of VW hoses from stuff that I've got here from the Apollo Mark II, Mark III and stuff. Also, that GTD bracket came in really handy. I mounted the pump, the pump here. Had to make connect, a connection on this pipe here. Uh, unfortunately, not going really to see it too much. Uh, this is an overflow pipe, I think, from 1.6 GT. Uh, it's got the right angle on it and everything, so it goes on. So now is the moment of truth. What I've done is I've filled up a six litre water bottle uh, with very light antifreeze. I haven't put too much in there. And now I'm just going to see how much it, the system actually takes. I'm hoping it'll take at least three litres because you need, obviously, the more volume, the better the cooling will be. And then hopefully have no leaks. All right, let's fill this up. I'm hoping this will bleed through properly. Yep, yeah, there you go. It's a good sign. It looks like it'll take a while, so I'll just speed this up. Okay, so these Audi ones that I bought from like the Mark 5 stroke 8P, I think it is, um, Audi. They look very similar, they clip, they clip in, but they're actually a bit too big, so it does actually leak. So I've had to use the original ones which isn't ideal because this angle kind of comes out a bit too much for me but hopefully I'll just have to modify the front panel slightly so I've dropped a little bit of water but let's continue not too much and I can still work out how much I've used up already well I've used two blocks already so I think I've used already about a litre in there okay let's continue filling this up well it looks like it's not taking up any more and I've used about two litres what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pump on and see if it if it'll actually bleed through some more with the pump switched on. So I've been priming it up with the power probe and it works perfectly. And I think it just needs to be I need to prime it up for maybe about 10 minutes and it will get all the all the air bubbles out of it. So you can see the water movement. But I guess the main thing is there's no leaks, which is cool, nothing's dripping. Now I just have to wire this up to uh, an ignition 12 pump for a relay from the inside. Just wire this up. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. So now I guess this is the end of this video, part two. The next part will be uh, getting the, the boost pipes done and actually fitting this cross member on. And actually once the cross member is actually on, is also then sorting out some air ducting so that actually gets some airflow through that radiator right there. Okay guys, so it's the end of part two of this charge cooler setup. I'm really quite looking forward to see how this performs and hopefully show you guys if it works, if it doesn't work. It's a total experiment. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. So I guess time will tell, but you know, someone's gotta try it, I guess. Also, as you can see, I've used all VW parts, all the pipes, you know, I've 
amazingly works out through my pile of pipes that I've got. I've made some stuff fit, so it's all pretty cool. So I hope you've enjoyed this and it's been some kind of, you know, informative in some way. And hopefully you guys can just keep on watching and see how this goes. And look out for part three, which will be in a week or two, which will be the boost pipes and getting the front crossbar on as well as modifying it and getting some air duct into this uh, charge cooler radiator. So thanks for watching. Keep safe. Ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling. Click on that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm. Cheers.